Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Jeb and Greencast. I'm your host, Tyler Green, and with me as always is Final Man Jeb. Hey guys. And today we have Jesse Bryson with us. Jesse, how are you? Hey, you're doing pretty well. How are you? Good. It's great Glad to have you on. Glad to have you on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So when did you first get into music? Uh, well, you know, it was kind of, my dad was obviously a musician in the Raspberry, so there was music the whole time, you know, like, there was never a time I wasn't into it, you know. Mm-hmm. I did first started playing for real when I was probably about 12, but there was always guitars around, and like, I figured I would, would know how to do it at some point, and, you know, but I first started, like, seriously trying to figure out the guitar at 12, and then shortly thereafter was in, you know, garage bands and things like that. What yeah, a fan cool. slash artist inspires you the most? Well, I mean, like I said, it started, my dad was always making really good records, you know, even demos when I was a kid, so that was the first one. Then obviously, like, you know, I was a kid, so that was like the hair metal thing, so I still remember being in the car and, like, jump coming on, and you know, (laughs) so when I was really young, you know, I was just, like, all into, like, whatever was on the brand new MTV and, you know. Ah. Yeah, it's just all of it. I remember being into the cars, or you know, I thought the hair stuff was really cool. Then right around when I really started getting serious into music, I dusted off like the Beatles records, and I started from the beginning of the Beatles records too. And you know, it just it just blows everything up. And then I just explored all of that. You know, the Birds was one of the first ones that really got me going. Oh yeah. But then yeah. my dad was also in the choir, which had like those hits and. My dad was in a, a band called the Sitting Ducks the whole time growing up. And they'd be playing like 10 to 2s. I'd be going to see them when I was like 4, you know, at like local bars. Yeah, I'll tell you, jumping into those uh, Beatles albums, not, not really knowing anything except for the uh, big hits, is like always a fun experience for the first time. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were always around. I, I'd hear it, but, you know, when you really start to focus in, it's a mind blower. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you get involved with the band Roosevelt? Uh, well, I had had a band called Quasi Qua when I was in high school. And even before, I mean, it started with like my my friends in the neighborhood from when we were like 12 on. And we did a bunch of stuff in Cleveland. We won like the first, at the Odeon, which is like the big club in, in Cleveland, we won the, the first annual high school rock off. It was like a whole citywide thing. And they still do it today. I mean, if if we're going to be playing any gigs, so I just I from that band, once we won that, they kind of put us on the map in town. And like in like 1997, we opened for Wilco. We got a we 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 got to be able to do a bunch of stuff and like just start playing a lot of gigs around town. And they were just kind of a another band in town that we looked up to. You know, a bit of a rival band, just like all the local bands are at that point in time. But we always really liked those guys, and we played gigs with them. And I don't know, Quasi Qua was kind of coming to an end, and they had an opening. I don't know. It just kind of worked out. We had known each other for a few years at that point. Yeah, past guest of ours, uh, Chuck Oni, was on the show, and he mentioned uh, touring with you guys for a show or two. And he was like, I got to call Wally Bryson on the phone <laughs> yeah. and talk to Jesse, too. So it was really cool. Yeah, I remember, I, I totally remember that name and the name of the band, but like, you know. It was a whirlwind back then. I mean, yeah. we were young and just going for it. So, I'm trying to remember. Was he a Columbus guy? I think so. I think so. I have yeah. to check. I want to fact check. Chuck might uh, might might be like, I'm after you if you don't know. But <laughs> right. I <laughs> mean, he, I yeah. totally remember him. I just cannot remember like playing gigs. I, I forget. Yeah, there's probably so many. Yeah, it was, it was back then. We were we would play anywhere. You know. That's how it's got. Gotta... So, uh, which track from the story of gasoline was your favorite to record with the band? Well, I mean, I like doing the whole. Mm-hmm. The whole album was done in like a weekend, just like oh, wow. on the stage at the Beachland Ballroom. For the most part, I think there was some overdubs, like really light overdubs, maybe one other weekend. So the whole experience was pretty fun because we were we had been playing a lot and we were well well rehearsed and you know we basically just knocked knocked the whole thing out. We we all just set up on the stage in the empty room, and then once we got the whole album down then i think chris did the lead vocals and then we did some backgrounds and then maybe just a couple of 
I think I did like one solo, like a, another weekend over at the producer's house. But other than that, I mean, the whole thing was fun. I always really liked uh, Broken Little Heart. From that. It was always fun to play live. And then the uh, Pointed Pistol, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, oh, I like that. that my parts on that one. I, I got to hear. I got to send it to Tyler. I'll have to have hear him hear some of the stuff. I got yeah, it up on Spotify. It took me a while to find, but I did find it, Jesse. So I did listen to some of it to yeah. make sure I could listen to it. And I really did enjoy it. So, guys, check that out. We'll put a link down below so you guys can find it a lot quicker than I did. <laughs> Well, hope yeah. you guys, you guys can listen. Well, yeah, I mean that that was like before the internet went yeah. through and that, so we just never really got that. No, but it's, it's perfect. It's good record. sound, good good raw garage sound with that like it's mix always, of yeah, all. It's always great that good these. Uh, it's always great that these cult records are always starting to find like their feet, like after like twenty year, twenty plus years of being out, and someone on the internet found it and like fell in love with it. You know? Yeah, exactly. All right, so of course you've mentioned your dad being Wally Bryson of the Raspberries. How how has that impacted your life growing up? Do you have any fun memories with them? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, we recorded that record right around the same time that Roosevelt was happening. Ooh. My dad and I recorded a record together called Dry. And that was called the Bryson Group. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's always been around. We he was kind of one of those he wasn't he, he didn't teach me everything he knew right off the bat like he made sure i sat in the room and like earned it i had to figure stuff out on my own but he was always a really good resource to be like if i couldn't figure awesome. something out he had it all down i know he's just he was great and he's a great musician what were, great uh, singer a great player what were some of your favorite things that you learned from him well i mean just i think we naturally just had the gift of being able to harmonize and and doing all that, but you know, he he could help me hone that in if I would ever stray on anything. Like father, like son, yeah. Yeah, and, but he wasn't he wasn't like he wouldn't candy coat it. He'd be like, no, no, wrong, you know. Yeah. Which was great because you know. keeps you training. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, he was he was a great teacher just because he was he's so good himself, and it was it was very hard to reach that mark. So I had to come up with things that I could do better than him because hmm. I couldn't do everything better than him. Or most things. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to, like, you know, well, I'll just be the lead singer always then from now on. Because <laughs> there was no way I was ever going to get to his level as, like, nah. being a parts guitar player or something. He's just, like, he's something else. You know? He's incredible. One of my favorite bands is Photomaker. And I found out, you know, it's like a super group between the Raspberries and, um, you know, the, the Rascals. And I was, like, in a sense, the members. And I was just so excited to really – my dad got me into Photomaker. So I was, like, yeah. who, who was this? And I liked when Wally was in the band. I thought those were the better records, in my opinion, because uh, I just really right. liked his voice and the direction that he was in with them. And I just – would you know, it's honor honor to uh, be able to, to hear those songs, you know. It's great. Well, and, that's, yeah, that's 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 definitely an unsung that band. Play thing. Yeah. Uh, was that him? Is great. Yeah, that's plaything. That's um, and oh, also uh, okay. that's that's Photomaker. That's the uh, first album there. And... Photomaker. Yeah, that's not one of his songs. I, I... Oh, okay. Plaything, I think, is Lex Marchese. He's an amazing. Ah, okay. Uh, an yeah, amazing all there in her eyes. Writer too, and one guitar of my player as well. Um, all right. that, that whole album is phenomenal. He's a great singer. Wally's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that was Frankie. I, I think on that one. I mean, I was just a great man because we yeah. had the two guys from the Rascals and then. Two Frankie and Lex were, too, were, think, were right? from just one. My dad <laughs> oh, was the only one from the Raspberry. Okay. Right. And then Frank and Lex were like a couple of younger guys from Long Island that were both just Ooh. amazing in their own right. So yeah. it was a really unsung band. I think the, the the same week that their single hit was like when that big disco record hit and the whole oh, world changed. So it was like and that was, it. was just off. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's one of the stories I heard. Who knows what? Yeah, to me, on. it kind of reminds me of like some of the bands like The Shoes back then, and some of those bands that just or The Nerves too, where it was the timing and stuff. But they were big, like in their cult like following, but not out. And it's like, oh, these bands deserve to be out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Known. That's like uh, one of the so most many variable feelings yeah. in the world. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even then, it was probably a lot easier mm -hmm. to get a little more recognition and try to get your foot in the door, but. Either way, even then, even now, it, it still remains the same. You have to have four or five dudes that can probably get in a van for five yeah. to six to seven to ten years consistently to and just, to really make it happen if you're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, and you have to dedicate. Less so then, but, but it was thing. still the same amount the same amount of dedication you're going to have to yeah. give to it. You know? 
All right, so what are what are some of your favorite memories from touring with any of your bands? Well, I mean, I always just really enjoyed being on the road. I mean, when we toured, we were just basically backing up a, a guy. With Roosevelt, we were backing up a guy named Tim Easton, who was a really good friend, great songwriter, and, you know, he was the guy that kind of had the juice to get us on the road. We would open the show, and then he'd join us on stage. So, I mean, that, was, that whole thing was just a blast. And we spent a month in Alaska. We did a lot of America. We went to Europe for two weeks. So oh, cool. it was just fantastic. It was, the whole thing is fun. You know, it's not for everyone, but I, True. I enjoyed it quite a bit. We're going to be there one day. we got a band coming together, hopefully. We'll be touring soon, me and Tyler, yeah, too. Man. <laughs> we just we love that energy. Yeah. That raw Buy energy. Good Stay van. tuned. Big news coming. Yeah, guys. I'm excited. We're excited to be able to do all this stuff and, and to... It, music is such a passion that it's, it's either you're in or you're out kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You can't be in the middle. Well, I mean, it, it changes, you know. Yeah, like, definitely. You, you got to keep your head on straight. You know, and there's sometimes you know, where the you road is really fun. keep positive, too. And, like, you know what? It's going to come in due time. A lot of times, it's a lot of waiting. Learn that right. growing up, and it's a waiting game, you know. And sometimes now, you, you guys think, are both from Connecticut. You guys, uh, are... Tyler's actually from uh, Tyler. Where are you from again? <laughs> from uh, Philly. No. There we go. Oh, Philly. Cool. Philly, and I'm from Connecticut. Yeah. Nice. So we we actually never met in person. We've been doing this show as an online personality thing for a while. We're planning to once this stuff was over. We were actually. Oh, wow. uh, we're probably gonna meet up at a Ken show or something, or a Posey show, or try to figure it out that way. <laughs> you guys have still <laughs> never met. No, we still have just only uh, online, uh, the two of us. So we've been and doing you guys, this connection. You guys have done music. a band on online. Yeah, actually, uh, the band that we're um, is uh, reference to uh, the band that we're referencing is we had an episode a while ago back is your friend Jeb, which has Arthur Roberts, Dave Fox of the Posies. Now we have uh, Jason Cropper um, of Weezer coming in too, ex Weezer. Um, nice. working on so we just like to work with anybody you know if, if anybody wants to play with us and it, it's us getting our name out there but it's also it's just really fun to make music gotcha so we, we'll work with anybody <laughs> so if you're listening in and you, you want to play you know hook me up yeah anytime man. and jesse you too why not <laughs> sure. we'll be honored uh but yeah, uh, i'll have to hear your stuff yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you uh um some of my new stuff and i'll send you some of uh stuff once tyler and i get our stuff done for your friend jeb we'll send your way too oh, absolutely yeah definitely cool yeah Tyler, I'm not trying to ignore you. I just can't hear you as well. Yeah, no worries. Just speak loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyler, here with the next question for you. All right, cool. So let's talk about some of your current projects. Um, so what's going on with the Still Souls? Uh, that's the, the Robin Electric is my band where I'm oh, like okay. the, the the primary oh, singer, yeah. and my drummer is uh, just a really close friend. And, a guy that I love. His his brother is Cody, who is the the Still Souls, and he's just been writing like basically like an album a month. So wow, he's just like I mean I don't know maybe I'm embellishing a little bit. He's been very prolific the last yeah. couple of years. So he keeps on releasing all this stuff. I basically am like the harmony guy there. Sure. Uh, but it's my drummer was in the band the Every Others back in like the late '90s, early 2000s. And uh, the guitar player Joel is in the Still Souls. It's basically just a bunch of musicians that have known each other a long time and are pretty tight. Ooh. So it's just a, it's like you know, I like to play with bands that are like brothers and people that I feel very comfortable with, especially if you're going to wind up going on the road and doing Definitely. things like that. It's, it makes it so much better. The family's way better. So, like family feeling. Yeah. So yeah, the Still Souls like because I love my drummer and Cody so much. Like you know, I'll always be a part of it as long as Perfect. they're doing anything. So yeah, he's he's putting out stuff. I think he just put something out last week, and whenever I can, I get out and do harmonies and add whatever I can to it. And uh, Joel is great on guitar. He's also a guitar player on the Robin Electric. Once we get back up and running. And, you know, just great musicians, and it's a lot of fun. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon we can all get back somewhat to somewhat normal. You know, it's not going to be normal ever again. What is ever normal? But maybe somewhat yeah. get yeah. back into being able to at least gig or maybe even, you know, I heard a wonderful idea. I saw, I read online recently that the um, one band I follow, uh, the week, the Weekends, the Weekends, the wink, no, Weaklings, um, I think is the power right. pop band there. They're actually doing a drive-in movie uh, concert. <laughs> Oh wow! So I mean, yeah, if that's I, a way of the future, at least there's something. I mean, I you know, it's not the same, but yeah, it's, it's at least something. It's fine. <laughs> It'll come around. Yeah, hopefully. I think I it's just like, it. one of those years where you just one year is just uh, a nothing, and everybody just right. Gets I mean, I'm I'm glad that I I'm not, you know, 
relying right now upon too. I mean, I yeah. wish it was overall, but it just hasn't happened that way for me. But what what a shame it would be if that was I know. your main thing right now. You know? Like I'm so, lucky but, enough that we're able to work with all these artists because they're probably looking for people to work with now too, which is great. But we're just like Tyler and I are lucky enough to be able to interview, you know, people as yourself to say, hey, come on and tell your story. You got, you know, it's it's perfect. And it's just yeah, lucky I'm enough just to glad I'm glad you guys are into it and uh, yeah, we you love know, it. carrying the torch. <laughs> Yeah. We really enjoy doing it, and it's something that we have been, uh, you know, passionate about, and just something that we started doing just because, why not? You know, how many, how many people say, "I wish I could talk to these people." We go ahead and say, "Well, we sent them an email last week." <laughs> Got you. We're just going into it. So this leads me to my next question. Um, what go advice for. do you have for those stuck in a rough creative patch during the crisis currently? Well, you know, I've been in a rough creative patch myself for a ah. couple of years, but I always am writing something. I just don't always finish mm -hmm. I, I usually wait for an opportunity to make sure everything I can get everything done exactly the way I want and then I'll have a bunch of half songs and I'll finish it as I go oh, okay but listen it's it's always going to come around it comes out when it wants to it's not always up to us there are certain disciplined things you can force yourself to do that can probably help you but you know in the whole business it's the, the whole the whole thing that you have to do is just remain very focused and take your lumps because you're they're coming they're coming for you either way. Yeah. So if you're having a rough patch, you know, get used to it. Cause there'll be more. But then there's, you know, the positivity when you get some success or have a little breakthrough is is enough to keep you going. Yeah, kind of. It's like a you know the the give and take kind of type thing where you're. Yeah, you gotta you gotta just love it anyway. It, it, yeah. it can't. You know, I'll do this forever. I don't have to, it doesn't have to be like, you know, anything major anymore. It's like, I, I'll do it in some capacity, no matter what. I just love, I think and it goes to anybody that we've talked to in the show and everybody kind of seems to agree that we just love making music or love being in that atmosphere of music. And it doesn't really go away. You can't just escape it no. once you're in it. <laughs> no, you start to pick and choose what you'd rather. Forever. Yeah, it's stuck you start forever. to pick and choose what you'd rather put up with or rather not after yeah. a while. And, you know, you don't, you can wait, you can choose your spots, you can do what you want to do, yeah, so it's especially cool. nowadays. Some, you know. some cool news uh, coming up for the podcast and the radio show I do, so keep everybody in the loop, just know that there's cool news coming out, which is kind of related to the, the waiting game and some cool stuff, and it's just gotcha. an awesome, well, Jesse, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll we'll yeah, end man. the episode up. Uh, if you want to, um, you know, stick around, uh, we maybe have you on uh, another time. Uh, perfect. We do a uh, band chats yeah, too here really. on this podcast, and maybe have you on for the birds band chat or something. Yeah, we'll talk about the birds good, and cover one album or something. It'd be really cool. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Yeah, really. Thank, thank you, you so nice much to, for nice having you on. Man. All right. Thank you, cool. Jeremy. No problem. No problem. Tyler, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. That really means a lot. <laughs> have a good one, All guys. Right,